Hey, and welcome to the next part of the onboarding video. In this video, I'm going to show you, uh, basically give you an insight on what exactly we do, uh, how we do it, and the environment in how we do it. The reason why uh, this video is made is because sometimes clients don't really understand the process of getting results for your store and generating revenue. So this process, um, if you know nothing about Facebook ads or if uh, it seems complex to you, this will take you from zero to 100 really quickly and so that you can really understand what is happening uh, in the business and how we generate results and uh, the process that we go through. All right, so this video is about understanding ad platforms. Okay, so basically this uh, PowerPoint, uh, if you want to watch this video in two times speed, I recommend you do it. Maybe it's a bit long. Uh, so uh, what data collection on the Facebook pixel means cold, warm, and hot audiences in a funnel, what a retargeting funnel does, uh, what scaling means, what data optimization means when we say uh, we're optimizing your ad sets, our process for creating ads, uh, understanding placements, what winning ad sets actually look like, and the characteristics of a winning video creative. So this entire resource will be available to you for download uh, at the bottom of this video, so no worries about it, and uh, please do use the resource and uh, download it after watching this video as well. Okay, so what data collection really means. So the Facebook pixel, uh, why digital marketing is so powerful is because you're able to track everybody who has come to your website. So your website is like your storefront, right? So whoever comes to your website are potential uh, window shoppers, right? Imagine that. So the, the Facebook pixel allows you to track all these people around the internet. Once you have that installed on your website, you're able to follow these people around the internet forever, like really forever. Uh, and then you can sell to them over and over again. So that's why data is super important, right? I often uh, give the analogy where Amazon is actually not a uh, delivery service, it's a data company. Uh, the AWS sector, I think, made around like nine billion in profit. Uh, and that's why they're so powerful because they, they own all the data, they know everything, and uh, that's why it's so powerful, yep. Okay, so how it really works is, for example, if you can see here, right, a customer comes, uh, he types google.com and he searches for something, a, a product on your website and then he goes into your website, right? The Facebook pixel will pick this up, will pick his, uh, his ID and will be able to track him forever. And in the future, if you ever want to sell to him and because you know, you know he's a very, very qualified audience already, he has intention, he has interest in the types of products that you're selling. So you are able to um, retarget him in the future with an ad. And then you're able to build the relationship from there and make a sale. So that's why it's so, so powerful. Okay, so what data collection and when I keep saying buying data, what it actually means. Data collection is when you're able to expand your potential customer base, right? From, from people who don't know you at all to people who, who know you and uh, who have not bought from you. So people who know you who have not bought from you are warm candidates, right? They have not bought from you. They're not hot candidates yet. So uh, that's what data collection means. If you can see here on this website, over the past three months, there have been 96,000 people who have come onto this website. What that really means is that there are 96,000 people who are potential customers, right? And no way this business is getting 96,000 uh, sales, right, per month or whatever it is, right, over the past three months. But that also means that there's a lot of data here that is meant to be captured. There is a lot of potential for a lot of sales. And if done correctly, uh, this data is extremely important. Yep, that's why um, if you're able to acquire and buy a data at break-even point, it means you can be very, very profitable in the long run. Because at first, uh, you're gonna acquire the customer, uh, you're gonna acquire much more data than your competitors. Besides, and then you're able to spend more on that because you're willing to go to the break-even point. And then afterwards, when everybody's struggling to profit on the front end, you already have all this data in the back end and you can just sell, okay? All right, so what exactly does the Facebook pixel collect? So uh, this is basically the metrics that it collects. So every single action on your website, right, um, is trackable. So if I go to your website and I search for something, right, I search it on the search bar, or I go to your website and I click the add to cart button, or I go to the your website, go click add to cart, and then I go to the checkout page, every single action is an indication to Facebook. And this data is being pumped back into Facebook. So that if you ever wanna retarget these people and uh, basically build the relationship up and prompt them to say, hey, 
do you want to buy this product now? You know exactly what stage in the buying process they are. Are they closer to the purchase here? Or are they uh, a checkout type of customer? Or are they an add to cut type of customer, right? So as you can see from like going down here, it's coming from cold to hot, right? People are who are nearer down the, the, the conversion funnel are easier to convert, right? And are showing very highly qualified prospects. And then going up here, yeah. So I mean, it's, it's quite self-explanatory. Uh, yeah. So on the left-hand side here as well, these are a few types of other data that Facebook collects. So people who have like engaged with your Instagram or Facebook page, people who have watched your videos. So be it, you can put videos out as an ad. You can put videos out organically, right? Organic posting. Like uh, people who have watched those videos, you can literally target people of uh, different characteristics. So people who have watched like 25, sorry, this should be 95, 25%, 75% of your video or 100% of your video, you know these people are sort of more qualified audiences already. They are not co-audiences. They're people who already know you in a sense. And then, then again, they are, your, uh, they are email lists as well. Okay, so what it actually looks like is this. This entire funnel, uh, as you can see from the top right, what you're basically trying to do when you buy data as much as possible at first is just to get people to know you. All you want to do is acquire people uh, to come into your funnel in any way possible. Come onto your website, engage with you in a certain way, or watch video and spend time with you, right? You're buying attention with ads, okay? So um, every time you, uh, the conversion funnel will look like this, right? Um, there are people coming in at the top of the funnel. So they are cold, cold traffic, people who don't know you at all. You want to push them down to the middle of the funnel where, for example, they have engaged with your page or they have visited your website one time. Okay, so that's how we classify a uh, middle of funnel. And then the bottom of the funnel is anybody who has taken uh, intention or a step towards the purchase. So anybody within this range, add to cut, uh, add to wish list, initiate checkout, add payment info, anything before a purchase is a bottom of funnel customer. Okay, and so this is very, very trackable. Everything is here is trackable. So we know un un and understand from the data that uh, how, how, big, how big your funnel is, what types of uh, revenues you can expect. And um, yeah, as long as you understand your metrics, Facebook advertising is, is, um, is profitable. And uh, once you get something that works, you can scale it up very fast. Okay, so the last thing that I'll say is um, it's very important to keep both pipelines running at the same time, right? So for example, if we were spending like uh, $5,000 on an ad budget, and then uh, we could suggest 20% of the budget be for middle of funnel people and bottom of funnel. And then uh, uh, the 80%, the rest of the budget be spent on top of the funnel. This is very important because uh, you should not only focus on retargeting. So this is where the money is, right? But you should not only 100% focus your budget on selling to people. You must always have your pipeline full so that you never worry about sales coming in all the time. Yep. You always have new customers coming in. All right, so basically, Facebook ads is, is literally like any other form of sales or marketing. It's all about building relationship and you're buying attention, right? So people buy from those uh, people whom they know, like, and trust, right? That's why it takes a bit of time to develop that relationship. Why, why like, people don't understand uh, if you're buying advertising in an online space, right? Why doesn't money just come in automatically? That's because you don't have relationships in the first place. So you, you are unable to sell to them. Yeah. So what we're basically doing is literally just digitizing the sales process, right? So in, in every type of, of sales, it's it's about the same thing. It's like, how does the product and service benefit the customer? So provide upfront value. That's the relationship being established in the first place. Afterwards, move them along, handle any objections that they have, and then show them social proof of uh, other people using the product or results that you've gotten in the past, right? To solve their problem, right? And then afterwards, you're able to ask for the sale and that's the call to action. Okay, so like I said, relationship building just takes time. Okay, so this is exactly uh, how a funnel looks like. Let me just open up full screen. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, let me just zoom in for you. So this is how uh, the funnel strategy looks like. Right, you, you don't have to know all of this. I'm just showing you exactly what it is. Okay, so like I said before, top of the funnel, as you can see, people who have, uh, um, where is it? Yep. We run engagement campaigns, video view campaigns, as well as conversion-based campaigns. And then middle of the funnel are people who have visited your website, 
but have not taken any uh, step to move on uh, to show any interest to buy. Right? So people who have viewed your content gave you time, gave you their email, or gave you time to visit your website. Right? So this is middle of the funnel up. Middle of the funnel down is basically people who have viewed the product page or add to cart. Add to cart, yep. So uh, it shows intent to buy, and that's why they are middle of the funnel down. Then bottom of the funnel is add to cart initiate checkout. So uh, the one step before the purchase. So this is basically how we target um, on the campaign level. Okay, then in terms of retargeting, retargeting um, is like low hanging fruit because you know these people are extremely qualified audiences. These people already know you. You just kind of have to convince them to buy, right? So um, this, you don't have to know this technically, uh, like the technicalities of it. But uh, like for example, we uh, retarget. So this is very aggressive, right? Everything from um, everybody who has watched 25%, 50%, 7,500, and then view content, which is basically people who have visited your website uh, over the last 0 to 7 days, 7 to 14 days, 14 to 30 days, and anybody who has add to cart in 0 to 7, 7 to 14, as you can see, anybody who has initiated a checkout, also done that, and then anybody who has bought previously from you uh, in a 60 to 90 day window, we also retarget that. Okay, so how Facebook ads really work? People don't really understand because um, it's very, it's like a black hole, honestly. Like there's no resource out there that really tells you exactly how it works until you get on a campaign and spend money of your own. Yep. So how Facebook ads work is there's a testing phase and there's a scaling phase. A testing phase is basically uh, seeing what your audience actually responds to. Like see what type of creatives, what type of photos and images and videos they respond to and the copy. And so uh, by testing a lot, you can get results when you can find something that works, right? So as you can see here, you see the stats on this campaign, right? Uh, this is the testing phase. Um, so we are, we are ready for scale here. So as you can see, right, I tested around one, two, three, four, five, six, around like seven, seven ads coming here. And like these three just completely died, right? So I, I turned them off, right? So that's what optimization kind of is, right? Uh, then these, these had purchases coming in. So as you can see here, cost per acquisition per purchase, you see, $18 per versus $5 per. I know this is definitely working extremely well. So in this sense, scaling is when you can see something that's working and you're able to increase the budget on that or use that creative and expand it to new audiences, right? So uh, for example, if this was at $10 per day, then I'll increase it to 20, 10, 20, 30, 40, $50 per day up to 100 maybe, right? And if that, that holds up, right? If the results still stay quite consistent, then we understand that that audience is ready for, uh, like it has been stress tested. So we are ready to increase and scale up to, um, try, try to hit above $100 per day just on this ad set alone. The campaign may be $1,000 a day or whatever it is. Uh, we just need to, to test things out, right? So something like this, uh, $18 per purchase is too high. So definitely we'll stop running that, okay? All right, so what does data optimization uh, actually mean? So uh, this guy, like his AI is really, really, very good. Okay, like I have to give it to him, right? However, it's not very stable. Um, they have up and down days sometimes. And when we do testing, uh, I need to see what works, right? So that's why I say there's, uh, this is hype term where in the industry they always say, oh, we use data-driven decisions uh, to optimize. Yeah, that's e exactly what this is. It's just using data to um, to understand what's happening behind the metrics. Is it profitable or not? Should we do this? Should we do that? Right? So, yep. Okay, so what our entire process actually is, is, for example, if you have your pixel installed, or if you had uh, previous audiences that we can use and touch on, then we test them all in one big, big campaign. Right? So, for example, two of these our winners. Two of these are getting very, very good metrics like this. $5 per purchase. Right? So, we'll take those winners and then move them into a new campaign. So then we'll test it at even higher budgets and then uh, test uh, audiences as well. Okay? Then the last step in terms of scaling. So we, we understand after two rounds of stress testing, right? That these audiences and these creatives work very well already. Right? Then we enable a big a big CBO camp, uh, a big campaign basically, uh, and then uh, launch new ad sets, and we try to be aggressively scale as much as possible. Increase the budget, try every single audience, try multiple creatives, 
and uh, yep, because we we've known from the the past data that this this works well. Okay, so our process is really like this, right? So we start off with an account, create customer avatars, and like know exactly who you're selling to, right? And then afterwards, we do competitive analysis. So we find out who who are comp your your biggest uh, competitors are, who are the top dogs that are really killing it, who are really doing very well, and then research them into a doc. So really take their screenshots of um their ads, uh take uh, the ad copy, see the customer review. So seeking customer feedback is very important because you're able to draw the emotional aspect of the copy from that. See it from the customer reviews on their own competitor stores, as well as if you're able to get feedback from your own customers, for example, an email list, uh, using Hotjar for feedback, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. And then afterwards, uh, you go into copywriting as well as ad creation. So the ad creative is really the face of your store, because imagine on Facebook or Instagram, on any ad platform, right? That's the first thing that the customer sees in uh, to a door into your store. So you must understand like it's very very important. It's basically the face of your store. Okay, so understanding placement. Um you're spending money to already acquire and buy people's attention. It's basically real estate. Because you're buying a space online. Right? Think of it like that. So if you're already uh it's important to understand placements because if you're buying real estate, you're gonna buy as much as possible, right? Like at the lowest cost. Right? So that's exactly why uh it's important. So the three placements you should really care about. You should really never, ever put out an ad that's like a 16 by 9. Something that only occupies a small spot, part of your screen. So the best ratios are 1 to 1, square videos, 5 to 4, it uh, extends all the way. And for Instagram story, uh, then 16 by 9. It fills, fills up the entire screen. Alright, so what does a winning ad look like? Okay, I'm going to show you. I'm going to watch a few videos with you as well to show you and break down uh, like exactly what, what is happening. So in this exercise, I'll just like you to just observe the types of things they show, uh, the types of text that they, they, they actually show, and uh, the pace, the actual pace of um, the timing, basically, of the video. Yep. So these are all product focus. Uh, they are selling products, uh, very generic products. And just uh, observe. And uh, yeah, I'll watch it with you and we'll come over the comments um, after after the video. Okay, now we watch the other video. Okay, now this is like a generic, uh, generic ads, right? Let me show you a few. This brand does it very well, um, like actual branded stores which run similar and very very good ads. So like keep those things in mind as well, and observe the types of uh, ads that are shown here. Okay, um, these brands will never put these videos on uh, this store. So uh, you have to come back to this video to kind of reference these videos again. So if they change the ad, then you, 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 can, you can check it out. But uh, let me just show you. Okay. 
So just observe the elements of the ad again, uh, the, the attention, the, the text that's coming, uh, basically everything. Yep. All right, we're gonna watch uh, two more together. All right, and we'll watch the last one together. Let me just pause this. Yep, this will be the last one. All right. Did did you did you see what uh what the elements in there? Okay. So let me just go through some of it. Like the general uh characteristics of every winning ad, they all have common things. Okay. So they all have some sort of story, right? And they have some sort of direction where the captions and the text always guide the customer into uh, explaining or describing the product in something um, in more basically with more information. Okay. So I'll just break it down here. A winning ad has uh generally has emojis in the caption. So from top to bottom, right, there is a link call to action in the description here. So here, over here, there's a link to the product page or whatever it is you wanna sell. There's a captivating thumbnail, right? It provides intrigue, right? So as you can see, uh, Eskido here, they have a lot of uh, call to actions here. And uh, they point to something, right? Like you don't really understand what is happening, but you're kind of intrigued about it. And that's the, the thumbnail, right? Uh, we also test the thumbnail a lot to see what works and what doesn't. And uh, basically, imagine it from you're scrolling through Facebook and it's going on your phone. The only reason why you stop on that ad and stop on your phone is because there's something that you kind of want to see and like, oh, I'm like quite interested, right? So that's what the thumbnail is for. Right? And that's what the scroll stopper is for. The scroll stopper is basically the first three seconds of a video that will uh, stop the customer, right? So if someone is paying attention to you, uh, to, to, to your brand or whatever, like it's called paying attention, right? They're giving you the attention. So in terms of the first three seconds, it's very, very important because for them to continue watching your video after the first three seconds, that's, that's the, all the time it takes for you to show your value proposition. So the first three seconds has to be, in a sense, engaging. There must be a wow factor. And we also have to split test this a lot, right? So it must convey and show exactly why am I watching this? What is the benefit to me? So if you can see here, uh, let's open this ad, right? The first three seconds. Everyone's going crazy over this new island eyeliner. Did you see that? In the first three seconds, it's a still image. Why did we do that? Did you see one, two? Okay. Around two seconds, right? But it was quite a delayed response, right? It's because people want to see what, what, how, why everyone's going crazy over this new eyeliner. So when people run ads, it's a very specific form of advertising on, on Facebook for video because it's very, very different from YouTube ads or whatever it is. Okay, and that's the scroll stopper. That's the first three seconds, 
right? Also, storyline captions, words to guide the, the customer. Okay, there's a never a dull moment, and as you can see, there's fast, fast moving. This could potentially be faster, actually. That's why I scrolled through quite a bit just now, because actually they should have done it a bit more faster. It was not very engaging. And uh, yeah, people like have short attention spans, so you need to cater to that. Okay, that's a um, never a dull moment. For storyline captions, as you can see here, right, um, just now this ad, right, they had so many captions coming up all the time, right, just to guide the customer. Like, let it set for a moment, water test is literally describing what is happening on screen but because it gives direction it's much more clear on what the product actually does so everyone's going crazy okay yeah yeah so it's basically like instructions and showing exactly what the product does see smudge proof and waterproof so even though the video is showing it the text is making it so easy to consume this type of content is so easy to consume and so easy for the customer to understand what your value proposition is. Yeah, so that's basically that. All right, another thing is being product focused, right? So even though you're selling on Facebook, um, you should definitely have people inside to show people actually using the product because people trust people. People don't trust brands. So always have, uh, if you're able to, always have faces present in the video and always have people using the product in a certain way, all right? And then, uh, if you notice as well, there was a lot of social proof. As you can see, there were people using the product all over. So it's this is social proof uh, being used all over. And then um, afterwards, it gives value. So at the end, as you can see, call to action at the end of the video. If you can see at the end, right, there is this swipe up. Yep, shop now. Click the link below. And then there's a there's the direction to click. Uh, this one as well. Shop now. Click the link below. As you can see. So they're all very, very common characteristics that every uh, winning ad is good. And the reason why you need to have these things in place is because uh, if you're buying people's attention, you don't want to waste people's time, right? And the more people engage with your video, the more people they watch, right? Facebook actually rewards this behavior because you are rewarding the customer. They actually like your ad. So as a marketer, you're spending money with them. They like it as well, but they want the best for the customer experience. They will prioritize the customer experience. So if your ad is showing that, oh, a lot of people are engaging with it. A lot of people are clicking on it because the video is good, right? It will actually drive the CPM down. The CPM is basically uh, amount, uh, the amount you pay for a thousand, uh, view, uh, a thousand people to see your ad, okay? So the drive, if you drive that CPM down, you have a very good ad. You spend less money on advertising. You're able to acquire more customers, right? So um, your ad is super important, okay? So... This process-driven workflow, we're coming to the end, by the way, um, is when we do our testing and scaling and we execute and we test and experiment a lot of things, a lot of videos, a lot of creatives, a lot of audiences, ad copy, copywriting. We measure the metrics, right? And then from the metrics and the data, we get the feedback and then we're able to learn and improve the process from there, right? And as we learn and improve, then we have a further discussion as well as redesigning of the process to make uh, and execute even better right so doing this all together and like doing time to, to to execute and learning from our own feedback learning from the data uh, will allow us to generate revenue right the best thing about it is that it, this is a flywheel structure because Facebook works on AI so it gets smarter over time so once you buy enough data to a certain point uh, Facebook has so much data on your behalf that you are able to target audiences very very well and it already knows who to target, when to target, and uh, basically conversions increase. So it's like a skyrocket where at first you're buying data, you may not see results, and then there's a big spike up because you have a lot of data and Facebook AI is working in your favor. Okay, so I've come to the end of the presentation. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, you can download the resource below. I would highly suggest you to do that and keep it on file on your computer as well. So in case you ever need to use it, uh, yeah then you're able to use it as well when, for example, you are um, designing an ad creative or something like that. All right. Uh, I'll see you in the next step.